Hello and welcome back to another episode of Notion Bonsai. In this video today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to create dramatic bends and twists in your bonsai trunks in order to make them look a lot more interesting as they mature into older trees. So whenever it comes to bending and twisting trunks on your trees, I would firstly always recommend that the tighter the twist you want, wire the tree at a younger age. This is just a little thuja that I wired yesterday. It started off as like a little shrub. And it actually surprised me how much of a bend I could get on this tree. There was one, two coils and I could probably give it a third if I wanted to, but I decided to take it up straight from the back so that I could then begin to develop a branch structure on it. So I'm gonna grab a little thuja that is similar to the one that I wired yesterday and basically show you what I did to that tree. This is the little young thuja we got here. As you can see, the branches are very flexible. So the bonsai tools that I will be keeping on hand today are bonsai twig cutters or branch cutters, a pair of gin pliers and some wire cutters. And the wire gauges that I'll be using here today are one millimeter aluminum bonsai wire and three millimeter aluminum bonsai wire. So the first thing I'd like to do is get wire the entire way around the whole trunk of this tree. So I'm gonna grab the three millimeter bonsai wire and just measure to about here. And I always like to leave a little bit extra for the amount that I dig into the soil in the pot. I could probably take this out of the pot just to see what's going on in here. Quite a lot of roots. So I won't be doing any repotting, but it's just to see the health of the roots. And these roots are very healthy. As you can see, they're nice and lightly colored. In spring next year, I might reduce the root ball and plant it into a nicer pot. But for now, it's gonna stay in this little plastic training one. I'm just gonna pull it around the trunk of the tree. It is still possible to bend older trees. You can use techniques like branch splitting where you actually split the trunk of the tree right down the middle. But with that, there's always a chance of seeing the split scar as the tree heals later on in life. So if you have patience, I think it's a better method to wire the tree when it's younger but I'm still not against the splitting method. If I have a tree and I need to do that, I will gladly give that a go. I'm just gonna cut the wire at this point here and I'm gonna go grab some two and a half mil bonsai wire. This is just an old scrap piece of wire that I found in the heap of scrap wire that I collect. Because this is quite a young tree, we're not doing any refinement wiring. We're just sort of giving it a basic shape. Now, I don't wanna take this wire the whole way up the trunk as I did the last one because that seems unnecessary to me. Normally you would find a thicker branch to anchor it to, but there is none here. And I don't think I need to anchor it. If the wire's coiled enough times, it will sort of anchor itself. So whenever you continue to wire up the trunk, it has a good grip on the branch that way. I'm just gonna take it up the rest of the branch. Careful not to trap any of your nice foliage with the wire. Just weave the wire in between it. Here is where I previously chopped the previous apex of the tree because this used to be a really long whip. It's quite thicker here. So I want this piece to become the new leader. So I'm just gonna cut off this thicker piece that was previously here and then carry the wire up this thinner branch. Be very careful up here as it's so delicate. Now because the base of the tree is a lot stronger than the end of the tree, I can easily manipulate the end of here with the wire. Down here it's not so easy, so I'm going to place on a second piece of the 3mm wire, just from the base to about halfway up the trunk. And it should look something like this. Depending on which way you've wired, if you've wired clockwise or anti-clockwise, will depend on which way you can bend the tree. But you want it so that as you bend the tree, the wire begins to tighten. So it's mostly the tightening of the wire as you bend the trunk that keeps the branch in place. So if I take this piece of wire here that's been coiled this way, if I were to turn the branch the opposite way of the coil, it loosens and I turn the coil in the same way as the branch, the coils tighten up. I know that's quite a dramatic view of what's happening, but when you twist the branch, that's what's going on. I like to start the bends from really far down the trunk. That way the movement begins from just as the tree exits the pot. And because I'm bending this quite dramatically, I'm always keeping an eye out on the bend points because if there's any tearing starting to occur on the bend point or on the outside of the bend, that's when I know I've gone too far. So once you see that start to happen, if it happens, stop bending at that point. Just curling it round. 
You'll find that young trees can be bent so much, it's incredible. You can actually use the gin pliers to help you along with this. If you grab the wire and bend it that way. So now at this point, any branches growing downwards after I've given it the bends that I want, I'm going to cut off, provided that the tree will have enough branches growing upwards to supply it with energy. So I'm just going to cut that off. And I may have bent it a little bit too far around this area here, as you can see the bark starting to tear off. So just as a precaution in this area, I know it should be fine because it has healed once before from an area like that here and it's starting to heal over. But just as a precaution, I'm going to cover this area that has torn with a little bit of sealant. This is the sealant paste that I'm using here today. This is just for putting over some wounds on trees if you have any exposed areas that you don't want the tree losing moisture to. So this is just sort of like a first styling, little wavy trunk as the tree's young and then as the tree gets older and grows taller and thicker, we'll remove the wire before it starts to bite in. And then in the future, we'll be able to give this tree another styling and give it even more bends. And when this branch here gets a little bit thicker, we'll be able to wire it downwards and start to give the tree a triangular shape much like this one here. So that's how to wear a tree when it's younger and a little sort of seedling type thing and it's really easy to bend with wire. But what happens if you have a tree that has a really straight trunk and you want to give it some sort of interest and bend in it? This tree is quite a mature tree for a Japanese larch. The trunk is still somewhat flexible but nowhere near as flexible as a seedling would be. How do we bend something like this? First, I want to see what's going on lower down in this tree. To do that, I'm going to cut through the pot. I like to do this to pots whenever I don't have enough bonsai pots laying around, like plastic training pots. If you really think about it, all that makes a bonsai plastic training pot a training pot is that it's firstly made of plastic and that it's shallow. So if you have relatively strong plastic pots, you can just cut them down in size and save yourself the trouble of having to repot it, especially at the wrong time of year. If this was a piece of material that was maybe slightly thicker, I would advocate using a trunk splitter, but I don't think I should use one on this tree when I don't have to. It's pretty, pretty flexible for the tree of its age, which is quite common with larches like this one. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using stuff called raffia, which is palm leaf. Let me show you. This is a little bundle of raffia here. And this is used to protect trunks and branches of trees that we're gonna wire and give drastic bends to because as we twist the branch and tighten the wire, as I explained before, the wire can dig in quite a lot. And if you're giving it a drastic bend, you don't want the wire to scar or dig in too much to the tissue of the tree. So in bonsai, we use this stuff, which is raffia, and it's wrapped very tightly around the tree to offer it some protection against the harsh wire. And because I know larches can grow incredibly quickly, like all these branches here have developed in the last year, I'm not too worried about defoliating the tree from here up, applying raffia and then wiring it. That's what I'm gonna do. For this last branch here, I'm just gonna take off the foliage on it, but leave the branch as an anchor for the raffia as I get to the top. So to prepare the raffia, we're just gonna put it in a tray. Got a little bundles here already made up to use. This isn't quite so organized. I'm just gonna fill it up with some water. And I want to let this soak for at least five minutes. We just want a bundle together and a knot tied at the end. Whenever you're selecting the raffia as you get it, it's good to use pieces that are quite thick and strong. And the longer it is, the better because you don't have to keep using more bundles. And you can tell good quality raffia from the strength of it. Weaker raffia tends to break a lot easier, especially whenever we're tightening it around the trees. You want it to be good, strong quality stuff. Two bundles should do it for this Japanese larch. So whenever you're applying raffia, you want to start by placing it around the trunk or the branch that you're placing it onto. Simply tie a knot and you want to tighten it around the base of the trunk, as far down as you can get it. And from here, now I can cut this little knot. And I wanna have this piece facing upwards. And I'm gonna start coiling it around the tree now. And each time I coil around, I'm gonna pull it tight. As you can see, I'm laying the raffia in a flat fashion where all the strands are sort of in line. You don't want it to be sort of coiled up and then sort of overlapping them on top of each other. Space them out evenly and have it placed against the trunk nice and flat. You don't want to leave a big mass of space and have a chance of there being gaps in between. You want to overlap the raffia on top of itself 
about halfway over the last wrap. That's a sign that it's tight enough if the water sort of squeezing out of it as you tighten it. Now as I come to the end of the raffia here, I want to seamlessly attach the next piece. And to do that, I'm going to take this raffia and lay it downwards like this and continue wrapping, but only wrap around that piece. And as we come around with the old piece, as it starts to run out, we can lay that flat against the trunk and then take the new piece and wrap around that. I'm going to use this branch here now as an anchor to finish off the raffia. So I'm going to bring it around the trunk just one more time, making sure that it's super tight and come over the branch, create a loop with my thumb here, come around the tree and then place that piece of raffia through the loop we've created. Then we can just tighten it there on that branch, cut off the loose end. I'm just going to go along and cut off any stray pieces that sort of fell out from the last piece on the way, especially this big end piece here. And it's nice to have your, even your raffia, although it looks messy when it's on the tree. It's good to have it somewhat tidy before you wire it. This is three and a half millimeter wire. We're pulling it around it fairly tightly. I just found a piece of scrap wire from like a really thick piece of wire that I completely forgot I had, which I'm going to add to the wire that I just put on here. So we'll have a double coil. I think this wire is about maybe five, six millimeter. Fairly tightly again, following the last wire. Okay, so. so now the question is how drastically do I want to bend this tree? And I have done this to a tree before so I know that larches like this can take this kind of bend. Trees like Japanese maples can't bend as well as this whenever they're mature. They would be more likely to snap. So it's always good to know the species that you're doing this on. Okay, so that's a pretty good bend so far. Now, I'm not just bending it to the side, I'm twisting it as I bend, and that just helps it tighten and hold it in place a little bit easier. So already, it's sitting to the side, and I kinda like that sort of cascade look. You could, you know, you could easily go for a cascade, but I wanna keep going with the bend because there's a lot more up here. And if we put all this raffia on, we don't want that to go to waste for just one bend like this. And I want it to be a fairly organic bend. I don't want it just to sort of come up straight here and go out. I want to try and give it more twists so it comes right from the base and up. Moving up the trunk now with two hands. I'm just going to twist. Okay. See how we're getting a curve now. Okay. Now that's a super tight band that I'd give this tree. For an older tree like this, there would probably be a lot of tears in here, but the raffia will keep all that together and keep moisture around them tears so that they heal pretty seamlessly. I'm going to use the gin pliers just to grab another little band. Be very careful when you use gin pliers because it can seem like you're putting very little force. As you can see now, it's got this drastic bend for when it comes up the trunk, goes up, behind, and around. And then this is gonna become the new apex up here. And just so that it doesn't grow out of control, I want it to sort of grow outwards from here. I'm just gonna snip the top of the tree, and from there it will grow outwards. And I actually did this exact process to a larch earlier in the year, which I have right here. I'm just gonna cut this pot down so we can see what's going on. So as you can see, this bend is slightly more dramatic than this one. This tree has grown a lot more in the top now because I removed branches that were all down here. Nice time for this tree to be unwired to see the results of what we've just done here. I always like the unwiring process. It's always exciting to see the branches in place without wire on them. I know like the raffia and the wire can be really unsightly and it kind of looks unnatural and the whole aim of bonsai is to make it look natural, but in bonsai things will look a lot worse before they look a lot better. Okay, it's coming off pretty easily. And I can see it's starting to dig into the raffia, which means it's probably slightly dug into the trunk, which tells me that now is the perfect time to take it off. And here we go with a second piece of wire. 
Ah, I'm actually remembering what I've done here from earlier in the year. I think I stripped off half of the, like I actually stripped off half the trunk and then used a wire up along the tree for support. Oh, what a surprise. I never, I completely forgot I did this. And now that I see the wire inside the raffia, I'm just sort of remembering what I've done. The bend is holding anyways without the wire on it, which means it's done. Let's just take this off and see what's happening under here. So that's the wire there. Can I help with um, taking this off? Oh wow, that's quite a beautiful effect. Look at that. The dead wood running up the side of the tree. I could probably later come back and carve this out with a grafting knife. And here you can see there is a crack from when I twisted it and I get all this raffia off. Ah, I've also wrapped masking tape around the trunk as well to keep the wire on when I was doing this. That's what that stickiness is. It's like a little surprise. I completely forgot about this tree. As I started doing bonsai, there just became hundreds of birds in this area. Look at them. There's more up there. Starlings. I'm using a brass brush. You don't want to go really hard at this. You just want to go gently to remove the old raffia. It really cleans up the dead wood well too. Let's get rid of all that old raffia. Should I leave this part of the video in where I clean up the trunk? Just got some tweezers to help peel off the masking tape. So on the tree where I created this uh, sort of makeshift shari, the tree is actually healed over pretty fast along the top here. So I'm going to take this knife, also known as the shari maker, just reinstate this shari here. Just following it down the trunk. You can always um, take off more, but you can't add to a shari. So whenever you do this, it's always just good to work a little bit at a time. Make sure you're working with a nice, clean, sharp knife also. It's also starting to heal around here. So I'm gonna cut that off. And then further down at the bottom of the trunk here, you can see it's also starting to grow back in. When that happens, I'm just gonna cut down. You can see here where I snapped the tree as it was bent, and this piece sort of stuck out and grew a little piece of scar tissue. Kind of ruins the flow of the bend in the tree, so I'm just gonna cut that off. The idea is to show that half of the tree is alive and the other half is dead. I think the larch as a species is an excellent tree for beginners because they grow so vigorously. So any experiments or things you want to try out on trees, larch I think is the one to do it with. In terms of repotting, you want to repot larches every maybe one to two years in spring as young trees, but as they get into more mature trees, I'd say repot them maybe every three to four years as they start to slow down a little. From my experience, larches drink a lot of water. Like I'd water these three times more than any other of my trees. And for that reason, I tend to put them in more composty soil than free draining soil, just so that it holds a bit more water. So I'm not watering it constantly. I think I'm gonna put this tree into a nice new pot and that will be able to refine more and pull off more of the raffia that's still stuck to it. I wouldn't consider this tree to be a finished tree and I don't wanna put it into a nice bonsai pot quite yet. So I'll be placing it into this little small terracotta pot before it moves into a nice bonsai pot. Let's get this larch out of this pot. Again, I'm using a big sort of drip tray to catch all the soil. I can keep this as a little training pot for another tree. I know it seems like I'm using more and more tools from the start, but I did not intend to be repotting today. And although it is the wrong time of year to repot, it's coming into the end of summer right now. I am gonna take great care to overwinter this tree. So I know this tree will be okay, but if you're doing this and you don't have the facilities to protect the tree in winter, I'd advise repotting in spring. I have a bonsai root rake here and a bent fork and a wooden chopstick. Whenever I got this, it actually came bare root. Came like, I think I got them really cheap. It was something like 30 pounds for 25 of these Japanese larches. So I've got lots of them to experiment on up there. And I actually created a forest with some of them and they didn't have many roots on them. And in two years, it's developed all this crazy mat of roots. And I'm not removing any roots at the moment. All I'm doing is raking out the soil and untangling them.
Now, there is part of me that sees these long roots and I, I'm gonna cut them shorter before I put them into this little tiny pot because I don't want them getting all tangled in there and then it's gonna be a whole mess next time I go to repot the tree. I'm just gonna cut this here. There is this long, thick root that loops around in here. And I don't think the tree needs it, so I'm gonna remove that. That's all it was. Remember, it's the thin, fine feeder roots that feed the tree. The thick roots don't really do much, and that's all I'm gonna take off. And the soil type that I'm gonna be using today is a mix of pumice, academa, lava rock, and compost. I'm just taking some live sphagnum moss and mixing it with the soil just to help vigorous root growth and provide more moisture to the roots of the larch. I'm actually going to take it and cut it up even finer so that it can mix more evenly. Although this is going into a training pot, the planting angle does kind of matter because this is what determines which way the branches grow towards the sun at the angle it's planted. So if I plant it this way, all the branches are going to go that way. I plant it this way, they'll all grow that way. If I plant it this way, they'll come up this way. So the angle is kind of important. I'm gonna have it like this for the front of the tree here. So at this point, because the tree is in a lighter pot, I can lift the tree, look underneath, get at the areas that I couldn't before. It's starting to rain. But I've cleaned up the trunk now as best I could, I guess. The other pieces of masking tape that's still stuck on the trunk. With enough rain, the weather will just get it off that way. Now I wanna deal with the top of the tree because right now it has no shape. And I wanna give this tree a little wire and a first styling just to get it on the right track of becoming a really nice bonsai. Because all these branches are quite thin, I'm gonna be using one millimeter and two and a half millimeter bonsai wire. I'm gonna anchor this wire to the trunk. Just gonna remove needles that's a lot lower down on the branches so that it makes it a little bit easier to wire. So in this branch, this one's growing quite low down, so I'm gonna remove that. They're growing on the underside of the branch, so I'll remove them. I can shorten this one to here. I'm gonna shorten this one to here. Now you see, whenever I shorten it, I can see here on the larch where there's gonna be more branches developing from that cut point. So I've wired this branch on this side downwards and the same on this side, but I've left the apex. I'm gonna show you guys how I shape the apex as a lot of people can have trouble with creating an apex on a bonsai. So instead of leaving this growing straight up, I'm gonna tilt the top of the apex of the tree to the side. I'm just gonna bend it downwards. And then one of these offshoots on the side of the branch then will become the new apex of the tree that's growing upwards that way. I'm just gonna give this a little bit more movement now rather than just push to the side. And then from here, I'm just gonna shorten a few more branches, cutting them back to some more shoots that's gonna grow from there. And now I've finished the first styling of this Japanese larch and I'm really, really happy with the result of how it looks. You can sort of see the triangular shape just beginning to form on it now. And I just know this time next year, it's gonna look a lot more bushy and then we can cut it back and keep developing it that way. But the hard work's done, which is being bend in the trunk. And all that's left now to do is give this tree a water. And there you guys have it. That is just a few basic ways of bending the trunk of a tree. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the first styling of this. And if you guys wanna keep up to date on the trees that I make, the progression of them over time, follow me on Instagram. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. And on that, thank you so much for watching.